Hi, thanks for coming to our presentation, SWIFT, a case study in publishing fiction. Attendees will leave this session with suggestions for skill building with limited resources, a model checklist and timeline for the fiction publishing process, and a renewed sense of publishing opportunities in their communities. My name is Maria Agazarian. I'm the scholarly communications librarian at Swarthmore College. I will be joined by Braulio Munoz, novelist and professor emeritus of sociology. Swarthmore College Libraries has been a publisher of undergraduate research journals since 2016 using the Digital Commons platform. We are Crossref members and registered DOIs on behalf of our journals. Students are expected to do their own layout and formatting for their publications. Otherwise, my experience with publishing has been primarily in consulting roles, such as for a recent book of admissions essays, a commemorative festschrift, and a memorial book of poetry. Because we are fairly low output, I would still consider us to be in our early stage of publishing efforts. I would classify our staffing as less than one FTE because it is only a fraction of what I do in my position. The Always Already was a compelling opportunity which I saw related to the library's mission of creating and distributing new knowledge, particularly due to the circumstances of this publication. The first reason this presentation is called SWIFT can be seen in this timeline. Braulio has been working on this novel for over 20 years, and we were able to publish it in about six months. The, uh, there were some particular uh, issues with the kind of work this is that was different from uh, all the other works that I have published. And uh, in part, it has to do with the form. Uh, it's rather long, and uh, also it has poetry, and it has a lot of, and songs, and a lot of uh, texts that are in a different language. Uh, also, uh, the, the, the story itself is nonlinear, and that, that means that basically there's multiple entry points into the story, and it requires attention. It requires a great deal of uh, uh, of patience. Uh, so it's it's most it, most of the time I think that that kind of work um, is not uh, necessarily seen as something that one immediately think of publishing. Um, but uh, more importantly, I think their question was uh, had to do with the risk of the publication. Uh, that is the timing of it. Uh, it, it. I was finished with the text uh, at the beginning of the pandemic, uh, actually just before the pandemic started. And then um, I contacted my publishers and they told me that I really had to wait for a couple of years before I could actually begin to think about you know, submitting the manuscript and so on and so forth. So, um, and I believe that the book is so, uh, so attuned to our times that I needed to get it out. I didn't know how long would the pandemic last. Nobody knew at the time. So this was, this was something that I needed to work with. Um, and then uh, of course, uh, uh, I, I, I was always very uh, eager to have my work uh, in, in English uh, available internationally. Because uh, it, it, when I write in Spanish, uh, it, it has been translated into other languages. However, it is more difficult. These days, it's much easy, it's easier to access these books or my books through the internet. So that was a very important part of the reason for why uh, I decided to self-publish. I prepared for the publishing process by taking two LinkedIn learning courses, one focused on ebook layout and publication, and the other focused on print layout. I was already fairly familiar with using Adobe InDesign, so these courses were easy for me to follow. I also gathered a few books of comparable length from around the library and spent time measuring and recording margin and gutter sizes, font choices and sizes, and other details so that I could be sure that the always already looked and felt professionally designed. Our collaboration inspired the creation of some supplemental materials, including a list of characters and a glossary with Quechua words and their definitions. The process of designing the cover was also highly collaborative with our visual initiatives librarian. For the first time, Braulio was able to have input on what his book cover looked like. We opted for a larger font inside for the ease of reading and an off-white paper stock and a matte cover that contributed to the literary feel of the book. I worked with the copy editor to ensure consistent and meaningful decisions with the use of italics in the book, since there were so many languages included. 
We were also able to set the pricing of the book to a meaningful number for the author while keeping it affordable. Because we don't have a budget for our publishing activities, the costs to the author included hiring a copy editor, buying two ISBNs for the two formats of the book, paying for the Library of Congress copyright registration, which included two print copies to be mailed as a part of that registration, licensing the image of the figure on the book cover, and the setup fee for Ingram Spark. The main costs that the libraries were able to absorb were staff time, which included formatting, layout, proofreading, cover design, and meetings. All of the software that we used was also covered by the college's licenses, and the LinkedIn learning courses were accessed through the college's subscription. Another implicit cost to consider is the profit margins of the distributors. We opted for a print on demand model with Amazon and ebook distribution through several providers. One of the things that I was most excited about at the start of this project was for the potential for the ebook to include auditory pronunciations for the Quechua words. However, Kindle Direct Publishing doesn't currently accept files with audio content, so that was not possible at this time. I also ran into formatting issues with paragraph and character styles in InDesign and ensuring that all of the italics were accurate for the final copy. Because we didn't have an artist to draw the cover from scratch, finding a figure for the front cover took some time. We did not want to show the person's face because we were concerned that the photographs that were available to license did not include model releases. We also wanted to make sure that the clothing was accurate to the culture and the character. Our decision to use an off-white paper stock was a later one, so the original trim size I chose was not available in that paper stock. This decision required another review of the book page by page to adjust the formatting. Part of the reason that we published this book was because it evades genre, but this made using Am Amazon's categories difficult. It was made even more difficult by the fact that Amazon uses BISAC categories on the back end for the author, but not on the front end for the people who are browsing the site to purchase books. Additionally, any changes that I wanted to make on Amazon, such as categories or keywords, often required a Zoom or an in-person meeting to do so because of Amazon's two-factor authentication. Meetings in general during the pandemic posed a challenge because of campus and local restrictions and regulations. I, since I have been publishing uh, my work before um, through an outfit, a professional outfit, uh, or a university outfit, uh, I never thought of self-publishing. Uh, it was easier for me to basically uh, hand that over to, to the publisher. Um, so that for me to publish it, it would have been very, very uh, difficult to, uh, to, to, be, to initiate. Um, however, I called uh, somebody in the, uh, the college, uh, as well as more college, uh, the, inter uh, the uh, IT people, and they suggested that perhaps somebody in the library uh, would actually um, uh, be of help. Uh, so I did contact the library, and, uh, and I found out that there indeed is a, a kind of a fledging uh, team of people who have uh, the experience of publishing or basically experience of working with, with uh, the technology that is needed for publishing. So um, I, I actually then, this, when I decided to do it, I, I began to understand that it was more involved than I had thought in the past. So there were several things that I wanted to make sure that, um, that, uh, that I remember as, as some, something valuable in my experience. Uh, and one of them was that it was very good to have a scheduled meeting. So I find that without a scheduling meetings, uh, we be, I mean, I become very scattered. I don't focus on the project. I have other things to do and so on and so forth. But having a schedule meetings, that was very, very good. Uh, uh, it also was very good that I was able to be in contact with the team uh, one way or the other. I met them personally. We talked. And so I got to know them. Uh, and I felt comfortable working with them. Um, but I do do believe that it is absolutely necessary, in my opinion, to have a leader of the team. That is somebody who is a point person, somebody who people can talk to 
regarding the project uh, without uh, too much difficulty. And then that person can actually make some decisions after consultation with whatever member of the team it is um, and make those decisions and move the ball forward. And I think that's very important. Those are my experiences. The other experience, of course, is I, I had a wonderful time. I actually, I, I learned so many things that I didn't think I was capable of learning. Uh, you know, for example, to be able to, um, you know, rethink of a particular uh, uh, poem uh, because I thought, well, it sounded better this way. I once I publish a, a book. When when I publish a book, I, I write the poem and send it along, and I never really rethink it. But uh, in the process, I actually did have a chance to change a little bit here and there. I thought that was fantastic. Earlier this year, an article was published in the Journal of Librarianship and Scholarly Communication titled, Library Publishing Programs at Capacity, Addressing Issues of Sustainability and Scalability. In addition to their concrete recommendations, I think one of the most helpful parts of the article was acknowledging that continual growth is not sustainable unless there is budget and staffing to support it. So as much as I wanna take off running and include this publishing as an additional service through the libraries, I need to evaluate what structures I can put into place to make such a program easier, and to also evaluate if there are other services we can let go of before officially adding this one. At the same time, I don't want us to turn away from the opportunities that our community is asking for. In moving forward, I want our focus on goals and mission rather than on new products and subscriptions. As much as I would love for our library to include a full printing press machine, for example, I want to focus on bringing stories to press that might not otherwise have an outlet. This could be achieved through creating an imprint under Swarthmore College Libraries, which I have tentatively titled Apodidae Press. Apodidae is the family name for the birds Swifts, which is the second reason for this presentation's title. Not only is this publishing process fast, but Swarthmore also has a tradition of naming publications after birds. As I've mentioned before, this would be a great opportunity for unconventional books and the press itself could be flexible to suit the needs of the community. One opportunity that I'm particularly excited about is the potential for creating eBooks for books that are currently out of print. This also gives me the chance to discuss reversion rights with faculty and to make academic books available open access so as to increase their potential for citation. Another necessity these opportunities present is the creation of a student employment position focused on publishing, which would give students hands-on experience that may be difficult to get elsewhere and give me some of the support that I need in terms of completing these activities. I've learned a lot through this process and as a result created a model checklist and rough timeline with some of the many considerations that are a part of this process. The full checklist is included in the link on this slide. Some considerations include things like Purchasing ISBNs directly from Bowker, ensuring that the fonts used are licensed, deciding which distribution platforms to use, creating and sharing documentation and set of files with your author, and submitting the book for reviews after the publication is live. Thank you for attending our presentation. We would be happy to answer questions during the live Q&A or over email.